Hi everyone, my name is Marlene and I'm so excited to be with you today for the Data Thread Conference. Um, today I am going to be giving you an introduction to Apache Arrow for Python programmers. I am a Python programmer myself and I've been coding in Python for several years now. I'm also on the board of directors for the Python Software Foundation and just really enjoy programming in the Python uh, language. So this talk today is going to be specifically directed at people who are interested in Python programming or using Python code and want to know what Apache Arrow is and how it can be beneficial for us as Python programmers. So the first question and the main question that I will be addressing in my talk today is what exactly is Arrow? So Arrow is actually relatively new. It was created in 2016 when a group of database developers and uh, data frame library maintainers came together and realized that they were all trying to solve the same problems. And these were not just Python developers or maybe C++ or R <laughs> programmers, but these were people from very different projects and different languages. This group of people didn't decide to go back to their own <laughs> small communities and figure out the problems on their own, but they decided to come together and uh, create a shared solution that would help them address these issues that they were facing. You probably have guessed that the solution that the group came up with was Arrow. And Arrow is fundamentally about three core things. So Arrow is a format first and foremost. Secondly, Arrow is a group of libraries and specifically it's 12 different libraries at the moment. <laughs> and thirdly, Arrow is an ecosystem. So throughout the rest of this talk, I'm going to be looking at the different parts of these three different parts of Arrow and how each of them addresses or solves uh, one or more of the problems that uh, we talked about earlier. So the first problem that our so our solves is how we can take advantage of all of the advancements in uh, modern hardware today. We have increasing access to more cores in our computers and having access to multiple cores allows us to do more work faster. Today, the average CPU has anywhere from four to eight cores. And if you have a modern CPU, it can have up to 64 cores. And if you decide, you know, one other alternative is if you decide to switch completely to GPUs, you can then have even access to thousands of cores. And this is really, really helpful if you're running computations that can be run in parallel. The main issue <laughs> with just using Python, even though Python is an excellent language, is that it is not necessarily optimized to take advantage of the cores in our computers and it also doesn't necessarily utilize other advancements in hardware like SIMD and so because of this you know if there are some people who maybe know C++ and know how to maybe do you know work with multi-threading and can optimize <laughs> their uh, code that way but oftentimes you know you'll you might find yourself fighting with a gill and this is honestly not something that is a skill that everyone can do well and honestly takes a lot of work and practice to be able to do right. And so if you're not able to put in that, that time and that work, and if you don't know C++, this can be really difficult. And if you aren't optimizing your code to work with the hardware, then um, what we end up having is that we have this hardware with all this potential, but we're actually not using it to make our code more efficient. And an example that someone from my company gave recently was that it's like having a really fast sports car and it has all of this capability but we're being forced to drive it under the speed limit. One of the things that Arrow does is it addresses this problem by kind of lifting the speed limit for us with its columnar format. And uh, this columnar format is designed to take advantage of all of the features of modern day CPUs and GPUs. So Arrow's format is a specification of how data is represented in memory. So if you have data maybe in a database and it's transformed into Arrow, your data immediately becomes columnar and it also becomes binary. So it, it becomes bits instead of 
whatever it was. So not only does converting your data into Arrow uh, take advantage of the hardware, but it also helps to solve some intuitive problems that we might face when carrying out analytics work as well on big data sets. So as you can see on the screen there on the slide, I've gone ahead and I uh, got some data on penguins from <laughs> the Palmer data set on uh, GitHub and I loaded it into a pandas data frame and as you can the table in front of you is the data frame. And if I wanted to go ahead and <laughs> take the flipper length and figure out you know what is really important the flipper length, the average flipper length of penguins in this region, um, <laughs> I would go ahead and need to take the columnar data there and calculate the mean on that data, do some aggregations and calculate the mean. And, you know, traditionally data has been stored in things like CSV files or JSON files, and it's been st uh, stored in a row by row manner on disk. So this is actually not super efficient when you are doing computations like calculating the mean, because instead of just taking that one column, you're taking a row and kind of loading in every single other column uh, of data into memory. And so this can take a really, really long time and it can be really, really costly. One thing that Arrow does <clears throat> is that instead of storing your data row by row, it actually takes that data and stores it column by column. So it's more useful for us when we're doing data analytics work. So this columnar format isn't just unique to Arrow. Uh, Parquet is a very popular columnar file format that is becoming increasingly popular. And um, in fact, as of May 13th, 2022, access to the New York City taxi data set is now the default format for it is Parquet. Uh, and this is taken over from what was there before, which was CSV. And so, you know, this is quite a significant change because if you are in the data world uh, or have attended a data, <laughs> a data science conference or something, at almost every single data conference, someone will probably mention the New York City taxi data set. And so this is a really uh, key example of how the world is kind of moving away from this row, uh, row storage format that we used to have with CSV files and JSON and, and other uh, sort of formats and moving more towards this columnar uh, storage format as well. And, and it shows that uh, it, it is definitely advantageous. So, so far we have seen that you know, Arrow's columnar formats makes it possible for us to take advantage of modern day hardware. We've also seen that it allows us to do more efficient analytics work by storing the data in columns instead of rows. Now, the second problem that Arrow was able to solve be how we can make it more effective to move data efficiently from one project to another or from one programming language uh, or system to another as well. And, you know, say, for example, <laughs> in the olden days, <laughs> the olden days, I'm just joking, but before Arrow was around <laughs> and if I had, for example, a Spark database and I want to take the data in my Spark database and send it over to uh, Python so I could do some analytics work there. And then maybe after that, I wanted to uh, send that same data set, <laughs> that same data to R as well to do some data um, and analytics or cleaning there as well with R. What would happen in the past is that I would need to create a CSV file uh, from the data in Spark because Spark is programmed in, uh, is, is written in Java. And I would then have to write my data to that CSV file, send that CSV file to uh, Python, maybe load it into pandas. And then after that, do whatever I want to, to, after reading the, the, the data into pandas memory, then I would rewrite that data into that na new data into another CSV file and then send that CSV file to R and have to do the same thing all over again. 
So one of the reasons why this process is particularly costly um, when you're using CSV files is because uh, when your data is written to a CSV file, it stores it in a string format. And while Python, on the other hand, and other languages like R as well, need to be able to access that data in, in the form of bits. And so this means that you are going to, in order to allow Python to read your data from a CSV file, it needs to convert the strings into bits um, from disk into memory. And this, again, like I said before, can be really uh, expensive and it can be time consuming as well. Another issue that can come up when you're using CSV files is that when you're writing your data into a CSV file, you can, uh, you can actually lose <laughs> a lot of um, your data or the details of your data because CSV converts that immediately into that string file format and doesn't really have support uh, for rich types. So for example, if you want to use uh, date time data or you're loading in date time data, it can be really difficult for a CSV file to differentiate between a date time uh, versus string data. These issues <laughs> have actually um, been addressed as well with the Arrow project. And the way Arrow addresses these, the specific issue of data exchange between different languages and projects is through its various libraries. So like I mentioned before, um, Arrow it consists of 12 different libraries and each library is actually a different impl implementation of that columnar format, but executed or implemented in um, a specific language. And so the Python implementation of Arrow is actually called PyArrow. Arrow kind of becomes this sort of common standard that different languages um, and different projects can understand and read and write in as efficient of a way as possible. And so because the data, when your data is converted into Arrow, it becomes columnar um, and, and binary as well, which is actually the, the, the default sort of format that languages like Python and R already use to handle data and memory. This means that there's minimal conversion happening and at some, in some cases you're having zero copying because your data is already in the shape that um, your language or your project can already read by default. The third and final problem that Arrow addresses is how we can make these libraries that I mentioned before as fast as possible at, or as performant as possible. At one of the core ways that Arrow does this is through its ecosystem. There's specific things that different languages specialize in. So if, you know, like I mentioned before, when we're working with hardware, oftentimes to get the most out of your hardware, you need to write code in C++ or C. And because the Arrow community isn't just made of Python developers, the C++ developers that are working on the C++ Arrow implementation, um, uh, some of those people who are actually really skilled in getting the most or optimizing your, the code the most for um, being used on hardware, when they make changes to that C++ library, it affects the PyArrow library as well because PyArrow is actually built on top of Arrow's C++ library. So it's actually, <laughs> they're actually like uh, Python bindings. And so this means that when the C++ library speeds up, the PyArrow library speeds up as well. And so this means that um, we're continuously having improvements happening um, because of the work that is being done across the ecosystem. And another thing to mention as well is that the Arrow community is open source. And so anyone who is you know, wanting to work on it from around the world um, is able to do that. And actually, if you're watching this and would like to contribute to Arrow, I have a uh, blog post that I wrote <laughs> about making my first contribution to the Arrow project. And uh, I hope I will be able to link it somewhere or you can follow me on Twitter and um, and take a look at the blog post and hopefully make your own contribution to the Arrow project. So, so far we have kind of talked about the theoretical side of things and you know why Arrow is, is useful for us as Python programmers. 
But next, I would like to, just to close up, to show some practical advantages or the practical ways that Arrow can um, help us when we're writing our code. So first of all, if you are a Python programmer and would like to get started with Arrow, you can just run pip install py arrow. Um, also, just as a side note here, <laughs> um, in the same way that people uh, write uh, import py, uh, pandas as pd, uh, you really don't have to do that. You could import pandas as spaghetti and it'd still be fine. But <laughs> just generally uh, letting you know so you're kind of not surprised if needed, uh, the standard is to write import py arrow as pa. And uh, another thing that's very cool about um, Py Arrow is that if you're already using pandas and you would like to just try out Py Arrow and see the difference it makes in your workflow, you can go ahead and you know just choose the Py Arrow engine whenever you are using something like Read Parquet or Read CSV. Um, those methods in pandas include the option to choose the pi arrow uh, engine. So this should actually make quite a big difference in terms of cutting the amount of time down that um, you use when you're reading Parquet files or reading um, CSV files. Looking at some more practical examples, I'm always kind of nervous to run benchmarks on my own because I'm no, I, I just feel like there are lots of standards for benchmarks. I'm never really sure if I'm hitting them all. So you can feel free if you see something up with my code to send me an email or something like that. <laughs> I'm not sure. But uh, in the example that I have on the screen, I wanted to figure out to see how much time it took to both read in data and then apply some sort of uh, computation or um, aggregation on that data to be able to um, to see how much time that took. So in that first cell, um, I took about a year's data from the New York City taxi data set, read that file, and then calculated the mean of the fair amount column. And so this took about 13 minutes per loop to be able to do and this is a really long time and i'm not really sure if it's just my laptop or what but it just took a long time with pandas and then when i tried this with uh pi arrow and was able to calculate the mean as well um and this took me only 112 milliseconds so that's a really milliseconds per loop that's a really big difference there that's about a twenty thousand <laughs> time difference so you know just just gonna put that out there and someone can correct me if i if i did something wrong there but in the second example <laughs> that seems a bit closer um together here i actually just took the parquet data um, and read that directly for 2018 into a pandas data frame and then um you know separately then decided to calculate try to calculate the time it took to just um, figure out the mean of that fair amount by itself without like reading in the data i um, went ahead and took that same data frame and I converted it into a pi arrow table and then from there calculated the mean of that fair amount column as well. And this took 12.8 milliseconds compared to that 52 milliseconds that we saw um, with pandas. As we can see that there is seems to be a, a really big advantage to switching to arrow instead of uh, of uh, using something like pandas to be able to read in our data sets and also to be able to um, perform different computations on the data as well. I would like to just shout out some amazing Python projects as, that are using Arrow 2. Um, Ray, Hugging Face, Graphistry, Apache Spark, and Dusk are all using Arrow in some way, which is really awesome because those are really cool projects in the Python community. Um, so that is pretty much the end of my talk. If you enjoy this talk and would like to reach out to me, you can send me an email at marlene at voltrondata.com or feel free to tweet at me, marlene underscore zw, or connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, hopefully this talk was helpful for you to help you understand what Arrow is and why you should use it as a Python programmer. So thank you so much for listening.